right, this is our second to last math lesson for the year, so that's exciting. What we're doing is we are multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000, and we're also dividing by 10, 100, and 1,000 um, today. It's really easy. I don't even want you to open your books right now because there's a lot of numbers and symbols and words that are just going to confuse you. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'll tell you when it's practice problem time so that you can do it with me. All right, whenever we multiply by 10, any number, it's really easy. All you do is you look at how many zeros are there in 10, there's one. And what you're gonna do is you're going to add a zero to the end. So if you have 163 times 10, it's going to be 1,630 because you just tack a zero onto there. And sometimes I just write the number first like I did up here and then I'll just add the comma into where it needs to go like that. So it's really easy, same thing with 100. So however many zeros there are, and this would, if it's like 200, it's two times 200, you would do two times two plus two zeros. It's really super easy. So um, we have right now 163 times one is just 163, but then you just tack on these zeros to the end. So 163, how many zeros in 100? Two. So you tack on those two zeros and then you put your comma in there and it equals 16,300. And the thousand is just the same thing. 163 times one is 163. And then you add these three zeros that are on 1,000 and you just put the commas in place. If you don't believe me, you can take the time to do long division, but really this is just a shortcut for multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000. Now when you're doing decimals, it's simple also, okay? What you do is you just move your decimal over that many places, okay? So instead of adding zeros, what we're gonna do is because we're making this number bigger. So if we hop this decimal over one place, then 100 or 0.163 times 10 is 1.63. So instead of adding zeros like you do up here, however many zeros there are here, you're going to move the decimal place to the right one time. When you're multiplying, you go, you move your decimal place to the right, okay? So let's try it over here, 0.163 times 100. So what we're going to do is we need to, we have two zeros here, so we're going to bump one, two places. So my decimal needs to go between the six and the three, so my new number is going to be 16 and 3 tenths, okay? And that is the answer to 163 times 100. Again, if you don't believe me, you can just find a calculator or do the long math, but I promise it's true. And lastly, we have 0.163 times 1,000. So we have how many zeros? One, two, three. So we're gonna take our decimal and we're gonna move it over one, two, three hops, and it goes to the end. So it would look like this. But if there's nothing after a decimal point, you don't need it. It's like saying if there's a zero up here, you don't do that. You get rid of that zero altogether and it just is 163. So you don't need that decimal because there's nothing after it. It's just 163. Now, sometimes there's not going to be all of those nice and neat decimal points and you're going to have to add some more. So let's just start here. This is easy. 0.3 times 10. There's one zero in 10, so we're just going to hop that decimal point right there, which means it is just going to be, I put that decimal point and I didn't need to, it's just going to be a three because the decimal point would be there, but you don't need it. So it's just three. Point three times 10 is three. Now, there's two zeros here, but there's only one digit. So what we need to do is we need to hop it over one for this first zero and then an imaginary number for the second zero. And what you do in that case is you annex a zero to the end. So 0.3 or 3 tenths times 100 is 30 because you need to annex that zero to fill in this gap here, okay? Because you still have to move the decimal point over two times because there's one, two zeros there. So when you do it for 1,000, same thing. We have how many zeros? We have three zeros and we only have one digit, but we have to go two, three more times. So we really need to get three, two zeros in there and our answer is going to be 300. Remember, you don't need that decimal at the end because there's nothing after it. Okay, now we're gonna do practice problems. I'm on page number 289. I'm gonna do the green problems with you so you can do the black ones on your own. Pause, go. Okay, 289 is where we are. I am on number one, green. It's 789 is the box. 
So what the instructions say is to multiply each whole number by 10, 100, and, res and 1,000 respectively. So what we're going to do is this first line is the 10. So seven, eight, or 789 times 10, all you're going to do is write 789. And how many zeros are in 10? 1. So our new answer is 7,890. So 789 times 100, how many zeros are there in the number 100? Two. So you tack on those two zeros, put your comma, it becomes 78,900. Do you see how the base number does not change at all? You just add zeros. And lastly, for 1,000, 789 times 1,000, start by writing the base number here, and then add how many zeros in 1,000? One, two, three. Put your commas, it becomes 789,000. Okay, now I'm on number 2E. Uh, it says multiply each decimal or mixed decimal by 10, 100, and 1,000 respectively. So we're going to have to move our decimal point over. Okay, so we have 16.325. Now, we're not going to write our base number first because we need to know where our decimal goes. We have how many zeros in 10? 1. So we just need to jump it over one place. So it's going to go between, the decimal point is now going to be between the 3 and the 2. So when you write it like that, you have one six three decimal point two five. So our new number is 163 and 25 hundredths. Okay, now multiplying this by 100, how many zeros are in 100? Two zeros, so we're going to go one jump, two jumps. So our, now our decimal point is going to be between the 2 and the 5. So we write one six three two point five we need to add a comma in over here and it becomes one thousand six hundred thirty two and five tenths and finally this number by one thousand you're going to add how many zeros three or you're going to move it there's how many zeros in a thousand three so we need to move our decimal point three places one two three jumps so it's just going to be right at the end which means it is going to become invisible so we just write the numbers down in the order that they are, leaving us with 16,325. Next, we're going to do 8. We need to multiply it by 10 first. So there's 1, 0, and 10. We're going to jump the decimal point over 1, leaving it at just 8. Okay, 0. 0.8 times 100. There's two zeros, so we need to move it over 1 two times, which means we need to annex a 0 here to make our number 80. And times 1,000, there's three zeros, so we need to jump our decimal point one, two, three places, which means we are missing two zeros. We need to annex those in here, okay? So it's kind of like a tier, like a, a step ladder going up and down between small and big. Now, whenever you divide, it is the same thing, only opposite, okay? So I'm up here. Um, I have 629. Don't worry about your books right now. Just watch and then we will go. So there's always this unspoken decimal point in a whole number, it's right there. So whenever we divide, we're gonna go the opposite direction, okay? We need to make our number smaller whenever we divide. So we are going to just jump this over. There's one, zero, and 10. We're gonna jump our decimal point to the left one. So our new number is 62.9, okay? Or 62 and nine tenths. Whenever you do it with 100, same thing. Unspoken decimal, there's two zeros, so we need to hop it over twice, and our number becomes 6.29. See, this number is much smaller than that number, so that means you know you're dividing. And over here, we have 629 divided by 1,000, so we have three zeros. Our unspoken decimal point, we're going to jump one, two, three places, put our decimal point there instead, so our answer is 0.629, or 629 thousandths. When there's already a decimal point, you do the same thing. You just might have to annex some zeros, and I'll show you what I mean. So we have our decimal point here. There's one zero and ten, so we only need to jump it over one spot. So we still have 0.58. Our number does not change at all, just our decimal point. However, over here, 5.8 divided by 100, we have two zeros, and we only have one number when we hop it over. So we have to go one more time and annex that zero. So... Um, our new number becomes 0 0.058, and that is the answer. And then same thing with the thousands. We have three zeros, so we take our, our decimal starting point. We go one, two, three, and we're missing two zeros. So our new number is 0 0.0058. So it's just moving decimal points and adding zeros back and forth. Same thing with multiplication. 
Whenever you multiply, you go to the right. Whenever you divide, you go to the left with your decimal point. Okay, I'm practicing now, so page 291, you can join with me. I'm doing the, um, the last ones in both 1 and 2. So I'm on 1E right now, and it wants you to divide by 10, 100, and 1,000, just like we did before. So we need to know that we have this understood unspoken decimal point at the end of this whole number here. So we're dividing by 10 first, which means we're just moving it over one place. So it should be between the 4 and the 1. So our new number is 2394.1, as your comma, it's 2,000. So see how it gets smaller and smaller? Okay, now let's make it, we need to divide it by 100. There's two zeros in the number 100, so we're going to move it one, two jumps over, so it's going to go between the 9 and the 4. So our new number is 239.41, and now that's 239. Okay, and then 1,000, it is three zeros, so we're going to jump at one, two, three spots. So it's going to go right there between the, two, the three and the nine where the comma is. So now we have 23.941. Do you see how our whole number goes from 2,200 to 23? It gets smaller and smaller. Um, okay, so let's do this one over here. We're going to have to annex zeros here because 0.4 divided by 10... We need to bounce this over one place, so we have 0 0.04, okay, because there's not a number here, so we have to fill it in. All right, now divided by 100, there's two zeros, so we want one, two spots, which means our new number is going to be 0 0.004 or four thousandths. And then 0.4 divided by 1,000, we have three zeros in 1,000, one, two, jump it over three spots, three, so now we have point zero 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 four, and that's how you do it. All right, go ahead and finish your assignments, and tomorrow will be your last math video. Yay!